More than 80 separate incidents of interaction between aircraft and ash have been reported over the last 20 years. Incidents on international flight paths over remote areas have resulted in engine failures and significant damage and expense to commercial airlines. In order to protect aviation from volcanic ash, pilots need rapid and reliable notification of ash-generating events. Through acoustic surveillance, we expect to develop a system of early detection of volcanic events in order to safeguard air travel over these areas. The purpose of this video is to show recent progress in the acoustic surveillance of hazardous eruptions. Since volcanoes are in tectonically active regions where earthquakes are frequent, there are often regional seismic networks already in place. However, volcano-associated seismic signals are often of low magnitude and are difficult to detect reliably at long distances, thus requiring a high density of seismometers near the volcanoes. Additionally, it is hard to distinguish between seismic and eruptive activity. In other words, it might be possible to have increased ground vibration without eruptions, resulting in possible high false alarm rates from regional seismic monitoring networks. Using low frequency sound or infrasound to rapidly identify explosive volcanic eruptions has been discussed in the aviation safety communities for some time. Acoustic surveillance can reduce the ambiguity between eruptive and purely seismic activity in an active volcano and provide additional, and possibly more precise, estimates for the onset time of an eruption. A direct link between the excitation of acoustic signals and the pressurized injection of ash into the atmosphere during an eruption has been demonstrated by over a century of observations. This knowledge, coupled with the ability to install real-time communication links between data centers and remote operating locations far from civil infrastructure, make Infrasound a potentially practical and effective tool for detection of ash-generating eruptions. In order to demonstrate our ability to reliably detect ash-generating eruptions in a timely manner, we decided to head to Ecuador, where recent volcanic activity in six volcanoes provides the ideal testing grounds for our experiment. Our team of scientists from Canada, Mississippi and Hawaii worked with Ecuadorian scientists to deploy and maintain two infrasound arrays that would be used to monitor volcanic eruptions in Ecuador and southern Colombia. We installed the two infrasound arrays in January of 2006 and started routine automatic processing of the data on February 14. We deployed one array near the town of Lita, just south of the Colombian border. We set up another array approximately 250 kilometers further south, near the town of Riobamba. We hypothesized that these two arrays could monitor large eruptions from multiple volcanoes and possibly determine the extent to which ash is being injected into the atmosphere. Even with the constant threats of devastating loss, the people of Ecuador have adapted to living with volcanoes. The fertile soil that supports the farming communities is a direct consequence of frequent eruptions. However, since October of 1999, eruptions from Tungurahua volcano have cost farmers some $17 million in damage. More than 90,000 acres of land have been affected by a coating of ash over two inches thick that kills crops and livestock. The tons of ash that collect on the ground are initially launched thousands of feet into the sky. By attempting to isolate the sound of these ash ejections, we aim to provide timely notification of an ongoing eruption to the Washington DC Volcano Ash Advisory Center, which is responsible for issuing ash warnings to air traffic in the region. The first stages of data processing in a new environment consist of defining the ambient sound field. This would allow us to separate the background sounds from the volcanic voicings. We are aided by the ability of infrasound arrays to identify the direction of arrival of a signal. So we can select only those sounds that arrive from a particular volcano, and from those sounds select only those that are characteristic of eruptive activity. 
Explosions from Tungurawa volcano are the simplest to observe because they are often loud and are easy to locate. Explosions may often be associated with near-surface events, perhaps tens to hundreds of meters within a volcanic conduit. Yet a more pervasive signal, indigenous to volcanoes, is tremor. This near-continuous vibration of the ground and atmosphere is often associated with a deeper and sustained acoustic excitation of volcanic conduits. In between tremor and explosion signals lie long period events which may correspond to a combination of upper and lower conduit excitations. The transition between explosions, long period and tremor events can be subtle or well defined. Each of these events may vary substantially in character. Our observations suggest that tremor signals from background activity, mild ash poor and vigorous ash rich eruptions are acoustically different. At Tungurawa volcano, we can use the distinct acoustic fingerprints of large ash rich eruptions to provide timely notices to aviation authorities. These notices may be used with eyewitness and geophysical observations to assess the hazard posed to aircraft by volcanic ash. Our team of international scientists will continue to use the prototype ASH system to develop real-time eruption detection algorithms for volcanoes in Ecuador, Colombia, and Washington State. Our preliminary results suggest that acoustic monitoring stations within 40 kilometers of a volcano can robustly provide notification within five minutes of an eruption.